Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are going to get started on a new project, <clears throat> and this is Sparrow Hill, and I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do a folio, and we're going to start with two pieces of paper that are 8 inches tall by 11, 8 by 11, okay? So they're both going to be the same size, and you're going to score them the same. By the way, I'm using extra heavy weight. This is 110 pound because it's a folio, and there won't be any chipboard in it. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. You're going to score at 3, 9, and 9 and 3 eighths. 3, 9, and 9 and 3 eighths. Do both the same. <clears throat> you're going to stack them with the score lines going the same direction. Then we're going to slide this over and we're going to attach this panel to the back like so, okay? So you just slide it over. This needs to be perpendicular and then we're going to attach this panel to this and that's going to give us two parts of our folio. And let me get the tape. I'm going to use tape. You can use glue if you want. <clears throat> Make sure you stay away from the actual score line. So when we're finished and it's in its closed position, this folio will be six inches across by eight inches tall, six by eight. So it's still a nice size. And it's a good, um, it's a good gift size and it's a good, you know, sit down, start and finish uh, in one sitting project. <clears throat> uh, we got a lot of feedback on Carla, Carla's uh, projects, and uh, we thank you guys for that. Um, she really appreciates it. She's a she's a sweetheart. So we are making sure that she gets all that feedback. Um, this is something that she does in her spare time for fun. She is also um, uh, a professor, so she teaches. So she's quite busy, so she probably won't be responding directly to comments. I am keeping my eye on them so that if there are questions, we do get the questions answered. So again, we appreciate all the feedback that you guys are giving us and the fact that you're liking some of these smaller projects. It's a good thing to know. Okay, so again, um, we started with these both in the same position. We're going to slide it over. We're going to attach this score line to this score line and I can always do it better this way upside down I think that's the left hand in me <clears throat> okay, there we go. so it should look like this now okay I've got a little bit hanging over here so I am going to use my metal ruler and my box cutter and just shave off that last, that little bit that's sticking out that probably you can't even see on the video, but I can. Okay. All right, so when it's in its closed position, it's going to look just like this. So what I'm toying around with is if I want to add one more panel, which I've already pre-cut and scored, and it would go here. Now what I found is when I'm closing, and I haven't decided if these are going to be pockets or flaps yet, so I'm going to leave them uh, in the open position. What I found is as I go to close, then what happens is I have two flaps closing. So I do think I want this third one in here. So what I'm going to do, instead of it being exactly um, 11 by 8, I'm going to cut off this flap. So this piece will be missing. Is that right? I gotta, I gotta think about what I'm doing. Nope. Actually, this is the flap that needs to be cut off. This shorter flap. Let me try that. I'm gonna test it, and then we'll see. <clears throat> and then I'll tell you the measurements. It's going to be nine. Let's try that. <clears throat> All right. So that means it would go. Nope. That's not right. That's not right. I did it wrong. Because <clears throat> this is the side that would be glued down. This would come up and over. Up and over. Oh! 
No, it's not a problem. We're gonna start, we're gonna do the same thing again. I kept thinking it was an extra flap, but it's actually gonna be glued down. We're gonna have it covered up with designer paper. Okay, so let me trim this down eight inches. <clears throat> Designing on the fly with Daphne. <laughs> and this is not the right weight, I can tell. It's too lightweight. Where's my heavy purse? Oh, here it is. Again, I'm using 110 pound. Um, that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. And it's hard to see it on their packaging, but <clears throat> let me see if I've got it right here. Yeah. <clears throat> I went, I was in there forever looking for it, but if you pick it up, it's up here. And for some reason I kept looking for it down here, but if it says extra heavy weight, it's 110 pounds. <clears throat> and I got it on sale, which it goes on sale quite frequently. Okay, let me do my scoreboard. Okay, we're going to do the same scores. They're going to be 3, 9, and 9, and 3, 8. And 9, 3, 8. Something's not right. So I've been telling you guys for the last several weeks, I've been kind of ill. Well, I finally, in addition to having God knows what, I finally did contract COVID. So I've got COVID now. Although pretty symptom free at the moment, which is kind of nice. <clears throat> so I'm quarantined, so it gives me all the reason in the world to sit here and craft. Okay, so we're going to attach this to this, just like we did on the previous one. So if you look at it, the, the three, the nine, the nine and three eighths are all in the same place. So we're just stacking them on top of each other, making sure that this panel stays perpendicular. Okay, I'm gonna add my tape. <clears throat> I'm in desperate need of a manicure. Sorry, my nails look so bad, but can't go out and breathe on people. Unfortunately, I think Mike got my son sick too, so he's upstairs resting. Again, you can use glue here if you want. Especially because it's 110 pounds, you don't have to worry about warping your paper, which can sometimes happen, especially for whatever reason, that's not all hair, uh, with white paper. I don't think I can get it. I have to cut it off. Let's test it so these should all fold down. Close. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So this will be covered with um, a piece of uh, designer cardstock. Okay. And that makes it feel pretty sturdy. Okay. So here's what I was thinking for um, these flaps. And I think that I'm going to make them pockets, but I'm not certain. But I've made these uh, cards that open. Um, bottom to top and I'm thinking I'm going to put those here and they'll open this way and then this will be a pocket with something else in it. So that's kind of where I'm headed at the moment. <clears throat> to think about that a little bit. Maybe I'll do something different in the middle. So maybe I'll do this a pocket, this a pocket, and in the middle 
So that's the other option is we can go this direction. But I like it this way. Okay, so in the middle, I think I might put a waterfall. So right now, let's plan to put these on uh, the, the last first and last flap, and we'll leave the center uh, open. So that means these are going to be pockets. And um, normally, I like to have um, a flange in between, um, so you can use the whole scope of the pro uh, of the pocket. Um, because when you put glue, it does it does bleed into the pocket, but it's a nice large pocket, so I'm not really worried about it. So I'm going to use glue, but I am going to keep just a little bit open on the top so I can slide my designer paper in. Okay, and the reason I'm doing it instead of putting my designer paper down is I want it to lay flat because <clears throat> it's kind of in the way. So I'll leave about a quarter of an inch on the top. <clears throat> I had to hold it for a second. This uh, 110 pounds, pretty stiff. It's got a mind of its own. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my magnets. I'm going to use two, one on each side. If you have larger magnets, it wouldn't be a bad idea to use those. In fact, I'm going to see if I've got some larger ones. It might be a little bit stronger. They don't feel any stronger, so I'm not. They're thicker, but they don't feel like they're any stronger, so I'm not going to use them. I know you guys sometimes ask what kind of magnets I use. I do use cheap magnets because I make so many books. So, from a recommendation perspective, uh, and I also don't always get the same quality of magnets, um, I would say use the basic gray. They are very good and very reliable. These sometimes are strong and sometimes they're not. <clears throat> But when you make as many albums as I do, you look for little corners to cut. <clears throat> and, you know, we don't sell our albums, so it's not like we, we get back uh, the investment. <clears throat> we do on occasion, but um, not for profit, usually for just the cost that's in the album. Okay, now this is going to be a little tricky um, because we need to fold this over, but we want to make sure we're not crushing this um, gusset area. So you want to make sure it's definitely accommodating the width of the folio so that it'll stand on its own, like so. So I think these are down. Let me double check. Yeah. Burnish these in place. <clears throat> okay, this will be the right side up. Okay, there we go. All right, so now it's time to start looking at paper. So while I've already got these cut, I've got a couple of them. I'm gonna go ahead and. Um, adhere those because I want to be going back and forth looking at them as I choose the designer paper for um, for the rest of the book. So what I have is the 12 by 12, what's called a pattern collection and the regular collection. In addition to that, I have the A4 pack, and I forget what they call it, 
but it's got tons of cut, here it is, cut apart on one side and then patterns on the other. So that's kind of nice. So I took one of them, which had four cards on it. I cut it apart and I'm gonna use two of the four cards on the inside. So what I'd originally decided was I was gonna use these two birds because they're facing each other. These are the other two cards that you have to choose from, which I also like. Um, these flowers go with those flowers better, but these two don't go together and this doesn't work. So this is what I'm, I've decided on. So these cards are 11, 11 and a quarter by four and one eighth, 11 and a quarter by four and one eighth. And what I did was I just cut, um, two and put a hinge in. So um, if you do what I did, you need one that's five and seven eighths. And the second one is six and three eighths. Six and three eighths, five and seven eighths. The six and three eighths get scored at a half inch and then you make a card. <clears throat> And you may notice that I'm not using um, ink on this, and that's because I'm using a white background and the white and the core of the paper is white, so I think that's fine. In, th in fact, I think it looks nice and crisp. So that's what I would recommend. A very cheerful collection. I like it. <clears throat> okay. So these are going to go here and here. This way so they're facing each other. And I want something to hold these closed, so I am going to use magnets here. <clears throat> right inside. Um, if you want, you could wrap some twine and do a bow around it before you adhere it here and the, um, the ribbon would hold it closed. I don't have anything that's pure white, so I don't, I'm not going to do that. And as most of you know, I'm a huge magnet fan. And if I'm correct, this may be, no, we might use a magnet here. I was gonna say this might be the last time we use a magnet, but we might put one more on this flap, which I haven't decided. It might turn into a pocket. <clears throat> okay, so that's gonna go there. <clears throat> There's my measurements. I knew I'd written them down somewhere. There we go. Super cute. Okay, so now I'm thinking about what to do here. So this is, let's double check the measurement, but it should be eight, or no, six, six, yeah. Between here and here it's six, so we could do four by six waterfall. Or we could just make this a pocket stuffed full of things. So I'm thinking about that for a second. All right, I wanna think about that for a minute. I'm gonna take a quick break and then I'm gonna to start to line up my paper. So when I come back, I'll be quite a bit more organized.
Hi, hey, baby. Oh, you brought me a ball? Thank you.
dripping. Um... <clears throat> Thank you. 
Mm-hmm. <clears throat>
Hey, babe. What you doing? Yeah, you got something to play with. Hey everyone, I'm back and I've got the rest of the papers lined up. So I'm going to do two 5x7 inserts for the left and right. Set that aside for a second. So we'll do those real quick because they're easy. And I don't want them floating around where I might accidentally repurpose them. <laughs> Let me make sure they're trimmed. Yeah, they look good. Collection pack. These are going to look beautiful right behind these cards. Like so. And over here. There we go. And then this is what I chose for the center piece. I am going to uh, glue this down. So what I'm going to do is make this an extended flap by adding a 5x7. Instead of a pocket, we'll just extend it. <clears throat> okay, this is going to go here, and then I have this, which was a cut apart from this, this gray pattern, and it's going to go right here. Let's go ahead and get this down. And this is five by seven. The inserts and the flap extender are all five by sevens, which makes perfect mat for a four by six. Okay, that's gonna go right here. Centered. Ok, 
Okay, then I have this cute little guy. It's going to go right here. Or is it? I changed my mind. I think I... I think this is too big, so we're going to cut something smaller. I think I've got a couple of different things I can choose from, but let's get back to this side. So on this side, I've got this green, which pulls the green back in from over here as well. <clears throat> and maybe I'll put it on this side, or even at the bottom of this page. I like that idea. We'll see how it looks when I close the flap on it. I think we can do that, yeah. So what I think I'm gonna do is just the bottom so that it's a tuck spot. <clears throat> so we can ha deliberately have it show or we can tuck it all the way under. So I'm going to just lay it down, close it, and I kind of like a little bit of it sticking out, so I'm going to lower it even more. There we go. And move it over so it's not perfectly centered. There we go. Then we've got a little bit of the green frame showing on three sides. <clears throat> okay, still can do something here. But let's go ahead and decorate this. So I chose this very simple pattern to go right here. And then we're going to add some um, embellishments. There's lots of cut aparts in this collection. There we go. Okay, so then these these opens, we still need to get the the back side of these done. And then this opens, and then we've got a tuck spot here. Okay, so we need to do some embellishing here. And of course we've got the back. And um, my magnets aren't sticking the way I want them to, so I am going to, I think, use a ribbon. And part of that is I think as I was building up my papers, it was getting bigger and bigger, so the, the magnets are slightly unaligned. I think that's what's causing the problem, but I'm really not sure. So you may want to consider, they just don't, they feel very weak and I can't, I can't tell you why, because they're just underneath the designer paper. It's not as though they were um, on the other side of the 110, which would have, made more of a difference. So I think they're slightly out of alignment. Um, and because of that, it's not holding very well. So I think I'm going to add a ribbon. And one of the ways I'm going to mask it is I'm going to apply it here. And then this is from, I think this is a pattern, uh, not a solid. So let me, let me look. This is... Yeah, this is from this is from the pattern pack. And here's what the whole sheet looks like. So I just cut one of these off and fussy cut around it. And then I'm gonna be able to run my ribbon strip behind it. Now the question is whether or not this ribbon is pink enough. It kind of looks peachy to me. So I, I may change my ribbon, but I want a wide ribbon. And then it's gonna come around and I'm gonna have it a little bit lower like so. And we're going to wrap it. This is fussy cut from one of the, the um, from the pattern pack. And then I fussy cut some additional flowers and this little bird to go on the bottom. So when it's all tied, it'll be tied down here at the bottom. So I got to check and see if I've got something a little more pink. This may not be showing as peach to you, but it looks a little peachy to me. But I also am having some light issues. Uh, so that is where I'm headed to make sure it closes. And you can see it's closing, but I don't know, it just doesn't feel very strong to me. Yeah, so I can shake it. Well, maybe not. I have to really work pretty hard to open it. I don't know, I'm going back and forth on that. But in the meantime, I'm definitely gonna use this. 
And I think I don't want to pop it um, because it's a folio. I want to keep it relatively flat. You can um, fussy cut some white cardstock around it if you like. That might make it pop out a little bit more. I'm sure, I mean, it will make it pop out a little bit more. <clears throat> so I'm going to add these flowers. Not sure how yet. <clears throat> and then this little bird down here at the bottom. Flowers look like they go this way. Ouch. Or this way. I'm going to cut my white flower out and see if I like it. Like so. And then we could add the white flower back in if we want somewhere else, but I don't think I like it. Okay, I think I like that. too forced. Okay, so I'm still going back and forth about the ribbon thing, so let me think about that some more. But we do have this. Um, either way, I'm going to lay this down whether I put the ribbon behind it or not. Another thing is you could do a belly band around this to help further secure it. Okay, so let's get back to the inside and let's cover the top of this. Almost knock my glue over. <clears throat> That's a lot of green. It goes a lot faster when you're not inking. I think, anyway.
Okay, so our insides are done. Let's go ahead and put something on the back of this. And I'm going to use this simple background. Two five by sevens. And I think I want the planks to go up and down. Did I do that right? Yeah, I did. Okay, it's not directional, so either way. something fun here. I really like this. I'm glad I'm going to use that on the back. Okay, let's think about what to do here. We have so many cut parts to choose from. any of these. So I definitely want to cut some of these apart and use them throughout, like inside here. I like the welcome to our nest and then of course collect memories is great for any kind of scrapbook.
Okay, so we'll get started with those. Now, if I wasn't so darn far behind schedule, and I'm getting tired of hearing myself say that, I would back these with white cardstock and stiffen them. But um, I need to get some stuff out for you guys. So there it is. So I would recommend that. Take your time. Back them with cardstock. I think you'll be happy with, with the result. Let's just do a little something over here. I'm only going to glue down one side so you can put your picture behind or on top, depending on what you want to do. Okay, so we've got those. Let's do a little something here. Needed a little bit of gray here, so that works well. Okay, now we have this big space to work with. Got some cut aparts here, here. What to do, what to do. I really like the bird houses, so I think I'm gonna fussy cut a couple of those out and maybe layer them. We'll see. We'll see. I'm going to rough cut them first just to see if uh, they're the right scale. I'm layered. I do like this one better. Okay. It's been raining all day here. It's kind of nice. I haven't got out of my pajamas. Um. Also cut this down. What do you guys think? I think I like it. <clears throat> Just 
thinking a little bit about if it needs anything else for balance. Maybe a little something up here. Maybe I just put this up here. No, nope, that's too small. We need something in there. Uh, I'm going to try this. which can really go either way. I'm just gonna try it horizontally, but you can do it vertical too. I love the sound of the rain on the windows. I think that's it. Let's do it. Oh, you could have just done the outside edges if you want to tuck your photo behind it. But I still think you can get an, a nice size photos here. That was a little too much for me. Let me get some of this clutter out of our way. Let's go through it. See how oh, I want to add this. I'm going to go without the um, uh, the ribbon. <clears throat> But like I said, I I think you should put your designer paper down um, on the inside first and uh, then place your magnets. And I'm going to go over that real quick so you know what I'm saying. Okay, so what I mean is, of course, leave this uncovered and leave this uncovered. But go ahead and cover these things because as you're adding layers and bulk, it means that this could be pushing out a little um, and changing the alignment. Also, um, just from going through this process, I would recommend rounding these corners because I do think, even though they're holding up pretty good right now, I do think it'll be hard to keep them from uh, bending. So I would round these corners, texturize them somehow. So that's it. Okay. I hope, well, maybe I need to put one more thing here. We'll find something to put right here. And I'll be back in just a second. Okay, I decided I'm just going to add a little bit of twine, a bow here. So that's going to be it. Um, it could be a ribbon bow, could be a lot of different things, but it's kind of a, a natural nature um, collection. So I'm going to use this twine. This is just something that I cut off. I'm not sure if I want to add it has an accent someplace else. I think I want to cut that a little bit shorter. So it's not hanging off too much. <clears throat> I like it. I don't think I'm going to add that. I think that's it. I think we are officially done.